Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Isabel, and also a very warm welcome from my side. I have the pleasure today to take you onto a journey through the world of uh, aviation and how artificial intelligence can help us in each and every day applications. And for that, I have uh, brought with me along three quite tasty uh, AI use cases that I have had the pleasure over the last five years to be working on. And um, I have prepared a small presentation for you, so please let me share my screen real quick. And you should now be able to see my screen. Yes, you are. Oh, that is wonderful. All right. So then once again, a very warm welcome from my side. I am Alex, um, living in the beautiful city of Hamburg, but today live from our offices uh, in Frankfurt at the FAC, basically one floor above uh, Eurowings Discover. And I'll be today presenting you the artificial intelligence applications in the aviation industry. And as introduced by Isabel already, um, I was the former head of AI lab over at Lufthansa Industry Solutions. You may know me from a couple of innovation days or innovation lunches over at the LAC in Frankfurt or in Hamburg at Lufthansa Technik Space or in Swiss in Zurich in the Swiss headquarter. You may know me maybe from the Makerspace AI. We have built up the, the artificial intelligence hub uh, for Lufthansa Technics in Hamburg and now, as of recently, I have joined Zero-G as a lead data scientist and I'm really, really glad to be here in this presentation today and to talk about my beloved field of artificial intelligence. So let's get started maybe with a short introduction. Who is Zero-G? Zero-G uh, is basically your everyday partner for artificial intelligence use cases in the world of uh, aviation and even beyond that. We are a subsidiary of Lufthansa Systems and we really, really love doing artificial intelligence. And maybe you have heard from us, um, for example, in our deep turnaround case, where we are basically using artificial intelligence and the field of computer vision to analyze the turnaround process at our gates. And in order to, for example, highlight problems in the turnaround processes, get some estimates on how well the service agreements are followed and how far the, deep, uh, the turnaround process has been progressing. And very often I have now used the word artificial intelligence and very often people ask me, what do you think is artificial intelligence? How do you define it? What is basically artificial intelligence? And basically out there are thousands of different uh, definitions for that. And today I'm going to present you yet another one uh, which we came up with. Uh, over at Zero-G we say artificial intelligence is essentially a technology and a technology that is here to help us, to help us people uh, and to help us solving complicated problems more efficiently, more easier, faster uh, and in a way um, that artificial intelligence is augmenting, it is extending our thinking, our home human cognition process, such that it becomes basically easier for us in solving complicated problems and maybe even coming up with better solutions here. So we believe AI is not here to replace us, it is here to help us and make us basically happier. And very often this term artificial intelligence comes with more flavors to it. Very often it is mixed with like machine learning, it is mixed with deep learning or with deep neural nets. And there is some truth to that. However, it is not perfectly accurate. And basically we try to give some, shed some light on that, how these big terms, these big um, uses, how they fuse together. And what we basically came up with is our very nice Venn diagram here. So essentially artificial intelligence is a field of computer science. I did my PhD roughly said in the field of artificial intelligence. And one subfield of that is the big field of machine learning. This is basically the, the area where some system, something learns from maybe large amounts of data in becoming some kind of intelligence such that it may help us as humans in solving complex problems. And then from 
like a subcategory of these machine learning fields, they are the field of deep learning, which is very popular um, over the last couple of years and has helped a artificial intelligence to become so popular nowadays. Basically, AI has been around for 20, 30, maybe even 40 years, especially in the research area, and deep learning has come up in the recent years and has boosted it into our everyday life. And so, without further ado, let's take these definitions with us and have a look at the Lufthansa Group and at the aviation industry and the use cases that I have brought along with me in order to put them into some kind of application. And for that, I have collected three use cases that I have been part on. These use cases come from the LSG Group, so our caterer, our former caterer. Um, and I have been working on these projects while being employed at Lufthansa Industry Solutions and have been on this project as the project lead and as the lead data scientist. And I have selected these, um, these three projects because they really speak from my heart. They are about food and they are about, uh, about artificial intelligence. And not only that, uh, they even help us in being more sustainable and they are really three nice examples for three completely different fields of artificial intelligence that are easily transferable to other application areas or to other problems. And uh, at this point, I would like to give a small shout out also to my colleagues over at LSG, uh, especially to Björn Rocker and Axel Freund, who have allowed me to be on these projects and also to be talking about them. So let's get into these, pro, um, um, these very interesting use cases. And these use cases are actually starting in this beautiful 747-8, which we're seeing in front of us here. And it basically starts at 40,000 feet cruising altitude inside our uh, premium cabin, inside our business class. And I just recently flew to Colombia um, on, on standby in our business class, and we had a really, really fascinating Chardonnay on board, slightly oaked in a, a barrique, um, and it has beautiful taste of vanilla, small, nutty, very raisiny flavors, absolutely beautiful. I think it was a 2017 vintage uh, Don Diablo, I think it was called, absolutely beautiful. And I had this experience a couple of times, also before Corona, uh, towards the North Americas, we had a, a Montes Alpha 2017 vintage, absolutely beautiful. And these kinds of comments are actually collected by our cabin attendances and entered into uh, the cosmic tablets where they are centrally collected. And for example, there might be some comment, maybe even of me, inside this data uh, that says that we really have an outstanding choice of wines inside our premium cabinets. And this is really nice to hear, but it also gives us a very, very nice overview of how well the cabin service is perceived, the cabin, uh, maybe the wine selection is perceived, or different kinds of foods are perceived. It even sells, tells us on which routes we might uh, need to improve or on which routes we absolutely nail the taste of our passengers. And it used to be, and this has been a project at around 2018, it has been the process that all of these comments were copied into very big Excel spreadsheets sent over to Lufthansa and then from Lufthansa over to the LSG in combination with thousands of these very big Excel spreadsheets from all over the world, from like Alaska Airlines, American Airlines, Delta Airlines, the lot, um, equaling to roughly 30,000 comments of these kinds each and every week. Way too much for a human to read, but essentially carrying so much valuable information that um, it was quite a pity that they weren't read. Um, and so we said, this is actually the most classical problem of natural language processing that can be solved using some a couple of machine learning algorithms by which we can create an artificial intelligence that is able to read these kinds of comments and classify them in a structured manner. And basically, um, what we then came up with and what we implemented for the LSG group uh, was, uh, for example, this in the form of this small demonstrator, where you could enter such type of a comment and it classified it in eight different dimensions. So it recognized here, this is a complement of the category wine and in the um, upper higher category beverages. And with 
every single of these comments being attached to a particular flight, to a particular route, we got a route-specific analysis of how many compliments or complaints are um, said about different kinds of products. And this was really, really beautiful because all of that data had been lying around for years and we could simply use them, put them into a small REST service and uh, adapt this to other systems. And it does not only work for uh, complements, obviously sometimes we have some complaints as well. And one of these complaint clusters that we uh, analyzed back then with the LSG group was that in Rio, in Brazil, uh, there were actually some kind of cooling problems, especially with the champagne. And in these cases, we actually had clusters of complaints complaining that the champagne was not cool properly, that it was not cool enough or that it was too warm. And all of these clusters existed in like Rio and were always associated with the champagne or with the wine. The reason for that most likely being that the um, ground staff was uh, not putting enough dry ice onto the trolley, which was then brought to the airplane, maybe standing outside at 40 degrees um, outside temperature, then was loaded into the airplane. And as the champagne is served even before departure, or shortly after departure, it didn't have time to cool down sufficiently. And so also this comment is um, analyzed by this small AI uh, completely correctly. So it co um, completely correctly identifies it's a complaint, uh, it belongs to champagne, uh, it's a food quality issue in the category of temperature efficiency, uh, it's also beverages. Most likely it happened in the outbound dock, so when it's waiting to be carried over to the um, aircraft, and it even recognized that the detail cause is too warm. And this is something that I really, really love telling everyone. This AI actually learned to understand this kind of language because it's not like searching for keywords or something. It learned from the data that the negation of being cooled implies that it's too warm. And this was like a really, really nice property and really worked um, brilliantly. And I believe my colleagues over at Lufthansa Institutions are still in the process of getting this into production. Now, after the complete uh, overhaul with Gekomedia and the corona pandemic, but this bears so much potential and it's actually pretty easy to implement these kinds of REST services. So if you have like a text file laying around with comments or with some textual information, maybe emails, and you need to be classified in some kind of category. This is provided to you by artificial intelligence, by the choice of the correct machine learning models. And this is most of the times uh, a work that can be carried out really, really quickly. So as a summary, what um, the LSG got from this project is basically the ability to react to these comments in near real time. So for example, this complaint um, on the upper right here, that basically um, all beverages hadn't been cooled properly because the cooler had not been working and the dry ice um, should have been keeping the beverages cold, was now able to be analyzed in a matter of milliseconds. And by that, one could quickly react and even in the next catering, in the next, on the next day, even in the next hour, one could react and maybe put more dry ice onto the trolley. Then in the middle, we had a really nice comment from Air France, where we got a very big compliment on the new Amos Bush that was loaded on this particular flight from uh, Char de Gaulle to, I think it's Sao Paulo, if I'm not mistaken, um, where it correctly identified it's a compliment to the cold food production um, area for the um, starter category. And with lots of these comments, we get like very positive feedback on particular routes. We could even do A-B testing there and see what catering is perceived, um, how well. And down here, um, a, com um, a comment that was absolutely adored by the product development department because it actually told something about the process of serving the food on the plane something, um, a voice that normally went missing, if it hadn't been for such an AI that is able to analyze it in a structured manner and basically identify clusters of such complaints so that it can be fixed uh, in upcoming product generations. So absolutely beautiful um, area of natural language processing here, where basically the AI is able to extract structured information from 
unstructured data. So the texts are written in any languages in very, very different styles. They are written sometimes it's heavily abbreviated um, and still the AI can extract the important things from that and turn it into something that we can analyze in Excel, for example. And as successful as this project was um, at the LSG, we said, well, it gives us extremely valuable information. However, it's only individual spotlights on individual certain moments. It doesn't give us really a very big uh, objective view of everything that is happening on the airplane. So there might be one Hunt Circle member that is heavily complaining and there will be one feedback collected for him. However, maybe all of the 300 other passengers were absolutely happy with it. We don't know about these 300 other, other passengers until we basically said, well, let's have a look at this food once again. So we are serving all of that in different classes uh, on different kinds of trays. And all of that is basically nicely arranged and prearranged in um, some kind of very ni nice presentation. So we've got this um, economy meal. Excuse me, this is all pre-corona, pre gecko pre meal, pre, uh, pre-ordering uh, stock footage I took from Lufthansa Pixels, but I think you still get the idea. Uh, it's all served in a structured manner and quite similarly um, served. So we have the eco catering, we have the premium economy catering, we have our beloved business class catering. Um, and even there, it's not anymore in these smaller trays, it's still on, it's on plates, but these plates are basically pre-filled. So um, we get a form of standardization there that we could use to exploit and to analyze it. And even in these uh, first class, I believe this is first class Japan catering, um, even there, it's nicely plated on individual dishes that are basically um, pre-configured here and then put on the airplane. And so what my, my colleague at the LSG said is, well, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that um, when it's basically coming back down uh, and it's taken out of the trolleys. How does it look like? Um, how does the food basically get back? Is, is everything eaten to the full extent or is something missing or is something always left over on there? Uh, we don't know yet, but we can actually have a look at this because everything that goes up into the air eventually comes down and then we can have a look at it. So um, the uh, LSG um, Pro Development Department said, let's have a look at that. Uh, have taken a very simple uh, iPhone camera and have taken thousands of pictures of, I think this was a United flight uh, to Newark, and have taken thousands of pictures. And just by looking at this kind of big overview, which is only, I think, a third of the uh, of one flight, uh, one started to notice that um, something is actually going on here. So we have a couple of trays of unserved yogurt down here, which is very interesting. Then we have the business class catering down here, where we have lots of leftovers of this sauce, of this more or less Chinese meal, I guess. So the assumption was maybe uh, it's too watery or it doesn't taste that good. And up here we had lots of um, salads that went completely untouched. And especially these small uh, salad dressings were very, very often left completely untouched. So just by looking at it, one gained quite useful information. But basically looking at that, uh, sitting a human there, letting me look at that all the time, that is not a real solution. So what basically I did is, well, let's tackle this problem using an artificial intelligence, using a machine learning algorithm that can learn from data um, in order to detect these kinds of informations. And so what I did basically just as a uh, marketing experiment over at uh, Industry Solutions, what I did is I trained an artificial intelligence to detect food. So I downloaded a couple of um, hundred pixel, um, pictures from looked at the pixels and I took these stock images like and started to label, I think around 16 images uh, and I started to label them like identifying where the salad region, where the uh, main dish region, uh, area, where is the uh, dessert area. And I labeled that took me around an hour and then I trained a deep learning model on that uh, that is able to basically identify the regions where food is evident on the individual pictures. And this is an actual result on an image, on the stock images from our Lufthansa Pixels database that has been never seen before by the artificial intelligence. And it 
really nicely identified the areas where food was present. Um, really fascinating. And it, did, it, it is one AI that is trained and it detects that in, in the economy picture. It detects this on this uh, premium economy tray. It even detects this in the business class image over here. And it even detected the one that is um, kind of blurry in the background in the bouquet of this image. It even detected that some food is over there. And then even in this very large uh, Asian uh, Japanese food image, it detected the components. It is slightly mistaken here. The uh, I think it was ginger, pickled ginger, has mistaken that as dessert, which is not completely true. Uh, however, it still got the idea of how food is served and how food is looking. And then I even put it into this completely different area. I think this is a stock image from some lounge. It even detected the food over there and even in this aerial-like picture identified the very small areas where food was present. And so I said, that's cool. Apparently, I have trained, based on just 16 images, I have trained an artificial intelligence that detects food in images, or food regions in images, which was absolutely cool. And now, just as of recently, I said, well, we have that, and we have all of these pictures um, that we have taken from these United flights, does that really work? Does that actually uh, is able to generalize his knowledge so much that the AI can completely generally detect food in these kinds of images? And so I simply sat down and said, okay, let's take these random sample of images and let's have a look at this AI that has only been trained on these stock images if it's able to detect the food on it. And there we go, it actually worked. And it, this was so cool. Uh, and artificial intelligence that was trained on perfectly rendered professional photographs, um, which were very artistically styled, learned to detect food that even worked in these random snapshots taken with a camera phone. And this was absolutely astonishing to me. And then what we then even can do is, we now have like the regions labeled individual pixels of food on these images. So we can basically look at the average amount of pixels of food leftovers. So we get like food leftover pixels and eaten pixels. And so we can have um, extract from these kind of images simple statistics on how well the food was actually perceived. And uh, we threw this together um, last week and basically did this analysis. And what we are basically seeing down here is like a distribution of the eatenness of these individual flights. So we're seeing the flight 906 over here, which has a um, quite high peak over here at like 5,000 pixels with food leftovers. And the more far to the right this curve gets, uh, we see that there is lots of untouched food on these individual flights, which can even discretize into different areas and say, have a look at this particular flight at the 945. This was, we had very good eaters on that plane. We had, most of it was completely eaten. Only a small part of it was uh, with leftovers and barely anything has been left unserved. Whereas in contrast, um, looking at the 907 over here, the amount of eaten trays is far smaller than the leftover trays. And there's quite a lot of completely unserved trays on that particular flight. And we could even now deep, dig, uh, dig deeper into this kind of data and analyze, well, of these um, leftover trays, what were the portions um, of what was not eaten on these individual trays. And overall, it turned out that the most percent of leftovers are actually desserts. So maybe our portions are a little bit too big that the people are totally stuffed by the mains, the salad and the sides, and do not get to eat the dessert in the end. It might be, it's a possibility, uh, which is now basically a hypothesis that is revealed by this artificial intelligence. And if we take a step back here and have a look again at this text analysis, the text analysis, the AI extracted structured information from unstructured text. It gave us like categories for free text. Here, we get a very similar thing. The artificial intelligence 
analyzes thousands of images and gives us structured information that we can analyze in Excel, in Tableau, uh, or wherever, and um, analyze that and derive business insights from that. So very often, the AI, the fancy AI that is like able to detect individual portions of images is just there to give us structured information that can then be processed in very, very many um, subsequent analysis steps. And yeah, so this has been one of my most favorite projects over the uh, last years because it also um, yields essentially sustainability. If we recognize that every time we have very large leftovers or things get completely unserved, uh, we can reduce that. And by that, we can reduce food waste and we can even reduce weight and by that save uh, some precious fuel by which we are then in the end also saving um, the combustion of, those, of that fuel. So an extremely nice project with an extremely huge potential. And so now what we have is we have this analysis, which gives us very good indication um, how big, how small individual portions should be, um, what food types are well perceived, what are not that well perceived. We get the text information as well, you know, where we see where we have some operational problems. We also see which food on which routes may need improvement. What we basically are missing in the complete chain is now um, when we now have perfectly optimized the product, we still need to know how many products we should bring on the plane. And this has basically been the last project that I've been on at the um, LSG group um, as part of my, there was the lead data scientist and the project lead um, with um, my colleagues from the Lufthansa Industry Solutions and various other colleagues from the S3 group who now have moved on. For example, Daniel Prince, maybe no, perhaps someone knows him, or Thomas Shachov, we're now both over at the uh, central functions. And in this project, we basically said, we need to optimize not only the product itself, we need to optimize our forecast as well. We need to um, know how many of our now perfectly optimized products we need to bring onto the individual airplanes, which means we need to precisely know how many passengers will board the individual plane, which is a slightly um, different problem than, for example, our revenue management has, who just, so to say, um, need to figure out how many tickets could be sold, but we need to know the actual amount of passengers who will be on the plane, including all of our standbys, including or excluding all no-shows, uh, and including all go-shows at the gate, in order for us to have the right amount of food available um, for putting on the plane, and hopefully having the exact right amount available, because every a tray that is basically overproduced will be some food waste and everything that is underproduced will be um, not convenient for our passengers. So we need to nail this forecast actually. And this has actually been one of my toughest uh, data science problems that I have faced in the last years. Because basically what was presented to us by the, uh, so the figures that were presented to us by the revenue management from um, and we did this project only focusing in the initial phase, only focused on Lufthansa Group, we got the actual forecast from the revenue management from the Lufthansa Group. And they were so awesome. They were so precise. Often they had like a mean average error of around four to five passengers, even on big jumbo uh, jets, uh, four to five passengers. And we all said, well, this is totally amazing. Um, let's see if it's barely any way there's any way possible in order to optimize even more on that. And we always consider these um, forecasts that we are presented with, uh, with like masterpieces from the very big painters. And they were handcrafted uh, various times, handcrafted over multiple years to reflect very, very specific uh, specialities of different routes. For example, certain events happening on the North America routes um, or handling different seasonalities occurring during the days, um, days of week or during the, um, uh, the, the seasonalities. And they include so much knowledge that it was barely possible to beat them by using 
some kind of simple model thing we could cover with. So what we basically said is, let's take these forecasts that were given to us and let's scale it up heavily to like infinity by the use of a self-optimizing, extremely large AI approach. We basically said, take these thousands of modeling ideas that are in our minds, are in the minds of revenue management experts over the last centuries, and basically model them inside one very big optimization framework. And then let the AI take over and not only train maybe 10, 20 or 100 models, which are supposed to forecast uh, many, many different routes worldwide, let the AI take over and take these extremely brilliant ideas and hand tailor them to all the individual routes over there. This was our central approach. And by that, we basically were handling 1.3 million AI trained forecasting models, each and every one basically taking one forecasting idea or forecasting model idea and hand tailoring it to an individual route, forecasting time point, and uh, cabin class. And by that, out of these 1.3 million models, we sent them all into a very big fight, fighting for the survival of the fittest, so, such that in the end, we got the most perfect model for uh, each and every particular flight. And this may sound extremely complicated, and it was extremely complicated. And my, my colleagues from the Industry Solutions did an astonishing job over there, um, making it possible to handle these 1.3 million uh, models, which I basically boldly came up with. Um, and it worked in the end, and it even worked so well that we could roughly save 85,000 meals each and every day in forecasting errors. Uh, which was estimated from Frankfurt alone in August 2019, so back in the uh, very big days. Um, and we achieved these 85,000 meals and reduced forecasting errors by improving the business class forecast uh, by 63%. So we got the um, uh, we got the um, mean average error of forecasting precision in the business class from Frankfurt in Munich down by 63%, which was really, really astonishing. And overall, we could even improve the forecasting performance by 44%. But this 63% was absolutely astonishing and helped us to be much more sustainable because these 85,000 meals would have either been underproduced, um, by which they would have been replaced by some other product, or they would have been overproduced, by which they would have went to food waste. And so this was not only um, the most challenging project that I've faced so far uh, with a very, very um, nice and highly scaling AI approach. It has also been one of the most favorite projects because it yields so much more sustainability. And so hopefully you see also from that point that AI is not only here to help us in the world of like accessing texts or accessing images or accessing audio or wave files or anything that uh, we didn't analyze before, it can also help us in analyzing massive amounts of like tabular data or numeric data that we have been handling uh, over the last years with um, other techniques. The AI nowadays can run on many, many different machines. It can run on your small mobile phone, it can run on your laptop, but it can also run in the cloud with basically unlimited access to uh, resources that we can use for optimizing um, current ideas in an extremely large scale, but which we can um, produce fascinating new metrics on improvements by artificial intelligence. And so, what we have seen today is basically a brief overview of how the Lufthansa Group, especially the LSG, is already using artificial intelligence. And more precisely, we have seen the areas of better recognition with computer vision. We have seen forecasting. We have seen natural language processing. Um, all of them have been examples for machine learning, something that is learning from data. And um, many of these models were based on deep learning very deep neural networks. But there is so much more to see. There is extremely large potential in the area of revenue, 
revenue management, on auto autonomous decision support, on reinforcement learning, on predictive analytics and predictive maintenance, like we're doing over the, at the Aviator at Lufthansa Technics. Uh, we even do uh, AI for cash flow analytics over at our treasury department. And currently we're working in the field of reinforcement learning for um, upper ops support and as presented in the beginning, maybe even for the turnaround optimization. And all of that knowledge is already actively used inside the Lufthansa Group, and we have the experts available. The experts are, are here. They are my colleagues sitting around me at Zero-G. Uh, we also have lots of colleagues over at uh, Lufthansa Systems, at Lufthansa Industry Solutions. Um, so Lufthansa Group is already in a very good way towards utilizing artificial intelligence. We just need you out there to bring us the extremely valuable business process where you might have a sense uh, where artificial intelligence can support you uh, and we will do our very, very best to give you the best AI models uh, ready to use for you such that we can become the world's first AI airlines. And so thank you. Very, very much. If you do have any questions or comments, please post them in the chat below. Um, give me a call, write me an email, find me on LinkedIn, find me on uh, my personal website. Just type in my name at, uh, at Google. And I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm stopping my recording now. And thank you so much.